at how many people we've actually got here, which is fab. Um, just to introduce uh, the ensemble to you, we're uh, Zephyr Baroque. We started up last year in about what, October, November time. Uh, Karen and I already knew each other. Geraldine knew Karen. And um, I just wanted to put an, another group together, really, so I could play with, with a proper harpsichord, which is always an absolute joy. Um, and we decided that normally you'd have a recorder and a harpsichord and possibly a cellist or a bass file but um, Karen's got her Baroque bassoon and we sort of went on a bit of a mission really to try and find some music that had a bass line that's perhaps a little bit more independent than you would normally have in a typical sort of trio sonata. Uh, so we've had a lot of fun sort of trying out different bits of music in that. Um, so all of our instruments are copies of original uh, Baroque instruments. Uh, this one is, is made by Tim Cranmore, who's one of the sort of only makers in, in England at the moment. Um, it's at what we call 415 pitch, so it's a very slightly lower pitch uh, than standard. I've just bought my... This is my normal, normal pitched treble. You can just see that there's a very slight difference in size. Actually, if I put it down that way, it's probably easier. This one's slightly smaller. Okay, so it gives you a slightly different pitch to it, um, but makes the music even more lovely. Okay, so um, we're going to play a number of pieces for you this afternoon. Uh, they're all Baroque music, because obviously that's the era that the music was written for, for these instruments. And we've now got a little bit of Telemann for you. Okay. Thank you. 
playing a lovely instrument made by Richard Taylor, who's sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll just say this, that there was a dynasty of makers in, the, in Antwerp in the 16th and 17th century, they were rookers, and their instruments were so highly prized that when they became obsolete, they weren't slung in the bin, they were enlarged because the sound was so good. And they're about two in existence that have never been altered, and this is a copy of one of them from 1637, the year of the great tulip crash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. We chose this next piece because it's got such an absolutely beautiful uh, bass line in the first movement in particular, and um, the second movement, there's four movements, um, like most of the, these pieces. Uh, the second movement, the bass line actually didn't really suit the bassoon very well, so um, we rewrote that to give uh, Karen a little bit more of a starring role and just make the two instruments a little bit more equal um, in that part. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
I'm going to go shorter. Okay, so this is the, the, the record that probably most of you recognise, although this is a wooden version. Um, this recorder, actually, this is about 30 years old. This is my first wooden recorder that I ever got. When, yeah, I'm not going to say how, how old I was. I'm going to work out how old I am. But um, I actually went down to the Dolmetsch. And, and actually, the Dolmetsch recorders in their heyday were quite good. Um, they're a bit more ropey now. I would certainly wouldn't buy a Dolmetsch now. But this, I love this recorder. It probably does need revoicing a little bit. But um, it's, it's made of rosewood. And uh, this is at normal pitch. Um, I am yet to buy uh, a, a 415 one. Um, but I actually went, went down to, when I was a child, my parents took me down to the, the factory in Hazelmere at the time um, to go and have a look at how the recorders were made and um, had to go on loads of different recorders and things, which is, as a child is an absolutely amazing thing to do. So um, I'm going to play uh, uh, Pavan Lacrimae, which is originally by um, the tune is by John Dowland. Um, we notice actually a lot of our music's in minor keys. Um, I think that probably reflects me, actually. I, I quite like playing in a minor key. Um, but um, the, it then has some variations on that, so I'm going to play two variations on this. I'm actually going to go up there to play it, because I'm hoping that the acoustic will suit the sound a little bit more. So, do enjoy.
Um, next, it's um, a single movement from a bassoon concerto. Uh, a lot of people might think that the bassoon is an unusual instrument to have a concerto written for it, but actually, uh, Antonio Vivaldi wrote 38 of them, which is quite surprising. The reason he was able to do that was because he was uh, in Venice at the Pieta, uh, were the, what, what's it called? I can't remember now. My husband knows and I can't remember. But anyway, it's an orphanage. It was an orphanage uh, for young ladies, um, probably the illegitimate daughters of wealthy people, but they were called orphans in inverted commas. And um, to pass their time, they, um, they learnt musical instruments, and the bassoon must have been one of them. Uh, so Vivaldi actually wrote the music for pupils at, at the orphanage. Uh, I was quite surprised about this, because some of them are really quite difficult, but until I realised that actually some of the girls stayed on until about the age of 40. So it was, it was an ongoing thing. I can well believe it from the amount of time I've had to spend learning to play this thing. Um, just to show you the instrument, um, if you haven't seen one before, it's quite different from the modern bassoon. It's only got four keys, so there's two there and two on the front, so which limits the number of chromatic notes you can comfortably play. So the other chromatic notes have to be sort of made up uh, by a mishmash of funny fingerings. I've got one or two bassoon pupils in the audience and they're looking at me with horror because they know what bassoon fingerings are like normally. Um, it makes a mellower sound than a modern bassoon. It doesn't project as, as much, um, but I hope you like it. <coughs> notice is that I keep having to blow the thing out because uh, the condensation runs down and comes out and blocks the holes sometimes. So I'd like to make sure now. Thank you. 
Okay, so this is our, our last piece. It's another sonata, another minor key, sorry. And um, we chose this one again just because the, the well, would be cello part, but now bassoon part, um, has more of an independent line uh, from the harpsichord part. Uh, just makes it a little bit more interesting. And um, if you do want to stop afterwards and ask us any questions about the instruments, please do feel free to do so. We, we are very much aware that they're probably not the sorts of instruments that you necessarily get to see every day. So um, do stop behind and have a chat with us if you want to. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 